Thank you, Paul. Um, as Paul said, my name is Peter Allen, and uh, he did a lengthy introduction, so I will repeat it now. No, I won't. Um, I want to address sort of as a stage setting, as a means of getting to Chris, and then really allow some time for Paul, Chris, and I to respond to your questions. I want to address what we see to be the client motivations around this topic of taking an inaugural offshore experience of whatever size, of whatever function, of whatever scope, but take that inaugural offshore experience to the next level of maturity. And, and I'd say at the outset here that um, there's a paradox that we're experiencing as we advise clients on this, those that have some first generation experience. The paradox is they truly do want to shift from paying for effort to paying for results. And they truly want a relationship with their service providers. But the fact of the matter is the industry's trend towards bigger providers with, with exceptional numbers of new recruits to deal with an exceptional rate of attrition is an intimidating factor for many clients. And I thought that the comments yesterday about the importance of moving to tier two cities in India is, an, is a very important strategic uh, tactic uh, to help address this concern about uh, scale. And it isn't a concern about ability to scale, it's a concern about the fact of scale and what scale might entail. So um, I want to share with you some client perspectives that we talk about uh, the, the, the issues that generally exist in the minds of clients as they think about um, moving to a next level of maturity. I'm going to try to avoid defining maturity in terms of scale because I think, as I said, that's actually a concern. Maturity uh, in the eyes of clients takes forms of real productivity and actually spending less money for more capability. But to give you a perspective in just one panel about the line of sight that we bring to this topic, uh, you'll see here that TPI in 2006 advised about 240 clients. And we're a consulting firm of about 400 people. We advised 240 distinct clients on their sourcing strategies. There's a lot of activity in this marketplace and it's largely for outsourcing at least, it's largely among the, the, uh, the global 2,000 firms. But 240 distinct clients that said, I need help in figuring out what my strategy is, how I implement it, and how I manage the result. And it's a fairly, uh, as we're a barometer of the marketplace, a fairly even distribution between IT-oriented issues and opportunities and those that are more business process oriented. And in the business process family, we put horizontal functions such as finance and accounting, call center, customer care, HR, procurement and the like, as well as industry specific business processes, such as you might find within financial services, healthcare, public sector. Um, so there's a lot of activity, as you can see from the profile of our business in, in looking through what are my, my alternatives, what's the business case for change. And increasingly, I'll tell you, our business is being driven by clients that do have a first generation experience with outsourcing or offshoring or both. They've got a captive center, they've got a shared service operation, they've got some perhaps project based, uh, one or more project based outsourcing relationships offshore and they are truly struggling with how to rationalize and evolve those relationships. And it isn't a contractual issue. It's an issue of the operating model within their firms and of the operating model between themselves and the service provider. So the seminal observation I would make here is um, that there's a strong move in, among the, the global firms that we advise around looking at the industrialization of services. Emphasis on services, not capabilities. Too often the industry tries to sell on capability. Most clients don't want to buy capability. They want to buy a service, and increasingly a defined service at a defined price. Again, emphasizing this orientation towards output, productivity, results, not effort. And what we're seeing increasingly is clients are forming those strategies in their second generation offshoring initiatives around reactions to internal and external pressures. And where the first generation initiative may have been driven almost entirely around some near-term cost savings, 
I'll tell you, virtually every client that we deal with that has some first-generation offshoring experience, they get it. They understand the cost-saving dimension, and now they're looking for a service dimension to go to the next level. And this introduces some, some challenges in the selling process. It absolutely introduces some challenges in the delivery process. And many of our clients are looking at um, the principles of shared services as a way to consider their uh, maturation strategies for offshoring. And the principles of shared services basically deal with transparency, deal with leverage, deal with scale, deal with measurability of results. And the four principal channels of implementation that we're seeing, you see reflected here in this chart, I'll tell you that, uh, again, virtually all of our clients are using at least two and increasingly all four of these tactics in order to transform their business and basically react to internal pressures such as dealing with mergers and acquisitions and achieving some degree of congruency across the enterprise and external pressures of the fact that co competition is aggressively using the very same techniques. Don't underestimate the degree to which corporations look at their peers to understand what techniques they're employing to become more competitive and it's a race to competitiveness that's leveraging offshore. And I want to emphasize that in a moment because I think it really does frame the maturation point of view. This, uh, this research was uh, produced by Duke University in 2006, and it reflects here the prevailing motivations for outsourcing and offshoring. And um, I've got to tell you, we find a very high correlation between what this research shows and the strategies among the Global 2000 that are looking at maturing and evolving their offshore operations. And we've highlighted in, in the, what looks like orange on my screen and green up there, the, um, the, the, um, the, the reasons among the top, the top 10 that are really driven by competitive motivations. Um, increasingly, as I said, corporations are looking to penetrate new markets, they're looking to um, improve upon their cost profile relative to their peers. They're looking to find ways to invest in the front office by being more efficient in the back office. And so this is actually, we think, quite a striking change from where we would have been just a recent number of years ago, where first-generation initiatives rarely cited aspects of competitive differentiation. They basically said, I need to save some money and I need to save it fast. And as Paul observed, the research that we've done shows that first-generation offshoring initiatives rarely achieve productivity improvement, that one Western job is performed by two or more offshore resources, and that it generally takes three years or more for the relationship to evolve, and whether that relationship is outsourced or captive, but the relationship between the service delivery organization and the buyer, the internal buyer, to evolve to the point that there's true productivity. But it takes three years of experience. So what we're talking about today is those companies that have that experience, that have gone through that journey, have, ex have some first generation um, lessons under their belt and are looking to, um, to evolve. Reflecting that sort of in a timeline and also from a motivational point of view, the first generation offshoring initiatives largely were cost related, as I said. And uh, the industries reacted, I think, fairly well. But the maturing of a relationship, we, we should recognize, means a, a deepening of those relationships, not a broadening of those relationships. It means taking on higher order capability and delivering those capabilities via services that are um, priced and that are measured and that are delivered on an outcome basis.